Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my living room. This is going to be a newly updated houseplant tour of all the plants that live in my cute little living room. <laughs> with this big beauty. This is my Norfolk pine. I got her off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, this actually was grown from one of those tiny little Walmart trees, but she's such a beautiful, stunning piece in this living room. And she's pretty easy going too. So if you're looking for a large tree-like plant for your living room and you have pretty adequate light, I would definitely suggest a Norfolk pine. It has its own little grow light up there, and as you can see, she's growing quite nicely. Then over here in the corner, we have a sad bird's nest fern, which I just watered, so she should perk up soon. I promise. Down here, we have a Calathea white star, and beside that is a Calathea jungle velvet. I can't say the actual name of this one, so... We're going to go with Jungle Velvet. <laughs> then up here, above my beautiful new egg chair, <laughs> is my chestnut vines. And these are such stunning plants to me. I love plants with big foliage. And I love how it's like glossy, but like super soft and velvety on the other side. They are a part, I believe, of the grape family. Um, so that's why they kind of look grape-like and um they're just they're actually pretty easy going other they kind of show signs like a pothos will they'll start to droop like this one's gonna start to need water soon so they're very good at telling you what they need and um i can never ever pass one of these up so i have three now but i wouldn't say they know to a fourth one or more <laughs> And then over here we have a Hoya macrophylla variegata, living its best life life in between these two grow lights. And she just finished blooming for me. We have a peduncle there and a peduncle right there. Beside her we have the beautiful Anthurium vivophyllum. I could be completely butchering that, but she is also such a stunning plant with her long, long leaves so so pretty below that we have another anthurium hooker eye this and uh i got this one because it just reminded me of like a prehistoric plant i don't know i love the ruffled edges of it and it's just a unique looking plant I'm, and i'm always drawn to those ones <laughs> then down here we have a philodendron birkin and above that is the philodendron pasnatum. I, I know I probably just butchered that. Um, that's what I believe we think this one is. This one came from Ecuador and it's not thriving yet, but she will. She will. I have high hopes for her. Then down here we have a philodendron pedatum or philodendron Rudolph as I think some are calling it. It's like the juvenile juvenile form of it. And then we have a bird of paradise. Beside that, we have a philodendron burl marks, a string of turtles, a anthurium superbum in the corner there that needs some water, and then above that is a Hoya carnosa crimson queen. This pitcher plant that has no pitchers, it did, I promise you it did, but I forgot to water it. So it's recouping now, you can see it's got some coming though, so she'll be producing those in no time. Then in the corner there we have a pothos that actually carries 
the whole way across these branches all the way to the end there. So I'm hoping I'll get more vines to start to do that, but we will see. In front of that, we have two banana plants. This one I've had for a couple years now, and she just always gives me big, beautiful leaves. I definitely need to repot her in the spring though, see if I can get more than three or four leaves. But definitely if you have a banana plant, you know they are spider mite magnets. So that's the only major downfall to having indoor banana plants. And this blood banana is slowly recouping. It didn't have enough light before, but now that it's next to this one, I think it should be growing big and strong in no time. Then down here we have a peperomia Tetragona, I believe. I'll put the name on the screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, another really easy going house plants, peperomias. Then up here we have a Hoya carnosa, just the green one. Beside that is a Pothos mandula, growing nice and long. We have a Zuko over here on guard. Above him is a Ripsalis. I'm not sure the variety of this one. I thought I knew, but if you guys know, please let me know. Because um, I'm not sure of the variety of that one. Then we have a Philodendron Mykins. Looking stunning. I mean, come on. The velvety leaves. They're just so pretty. Over here we have a Hoya Shepardii. And beside that, a philodendron lemon lime. This big, beautiful one is a lipstick, a curly lipstick plant. Not so curly anymore, but she is huge. She is about three years old, maybe four. She was one of my first ones, and she's been brought back from the brink of death a few times. And then this stunner. This is my green Congo philodendron. I got this one off of Facebook Marketplace too. And I mean, look at the leaves. They're massive and they're beautiful. And it's such an easygoing plant. She's a little droopy right now. I just watered her yesterday. So she should start to perk up soon. But green Congos, man, they're, they're stunning. And I mean, they're just basic. But look how beautiful they can be. Down here, we have a struggling... Bird of Paradise, the orange one. Um, again, watering issue. Didn't water in time, started to curl. She'll bounce back. Behind that, we have a snake plant and a sad dracaena. Um, but I promise you, they're, they, they get treated well most of the time. <laughs> and up here, we have a Hoya Publicalix uh, splash. Then over here in this corner, we have a tetra over here that I'm hoping will eventually grow up the wall there and beside that we have the dracaena dragon tree or margarita such pretty I don't know I'm, I'm definitely drawn to the big plants lately so these just make the room for me <laughs> then over here we have a hoya retusa and a hoya bella up there Down here, we have a Schifflera variegata. And in this little corner, we have a Peperomia. I'm not sure the variety of this one, the type. So if you guys know, but it's so easygoing, I often forget that it lives there. <laughs> and it, look how happy it looks. Then we have some more of the Peperomia tetragona. We have some cacti over here. I know this is the blue one, but I'm not sure the name. I'm not big on um, cacti and succulents, so can't tell you the names of those, sorry. Here we have another Dracaena. And down here we have a Calathea Rosia Picta, or is it just rosy? I can't remember. And a Calathea Orbifolia. That is honestly the easiest Calathea that I have. Above that we have the False Aurelia. I love these leaves. I love how spiky they look. And uh, it was much fuller, but again, lack of light. So now she's quite happy with the grow light right there. And she's spitting out new leaves for me constantly. 
Here we have some philodendrons, we have the lemon lime and the Brazil, and the Brazil actually extends all the way across there. They love it in this spot. And up here we have a Tritoscantia, the velvety one, not sure the exact type. And here we have my big bird of paradise. This is Big Bird, and she is stunning. Stunning. I can't wait to get maybe one more big plant in here. <laughs> and then here we have a kangaroo foot fern. If you're looking for an easygoing fern, I highly suggest a kangaroo foot because this thing's been with me for years and I've neglected it and it just, it always tells me when it needs water, which I love when plants tell me when they need water. And uh, it puts up with quite a bit, so kangaroo foot for the win of the ferns. Then over here is probably my most asked about. These are my herpusias, tassel ferns. Um, yes, they are growing upside down. No, I don't know how they did it. I must, there is moss there that I can see and then it goes to dirt. So that's probably how they keep the dirt from falling out. So you can see we have some new shoots there. We have some new shoots there. But these are actually pretty easy going as well. Um, they are a little sensitive to drying out too much, which is why we have some crispiness here, but other than that, they're pretty easy going. Above that we have a Deschidia variegata that's just on like a coconut husk, I believe, and I just soak that to water and it seems to be as happy as can be. Then down here, my beautiful lemon lime maranta or prayer plant, she's a stunner. I, I just love the lemon lime variety. And then this Alocasia zebrina with the wonderful striped stalks there. And a Raven ZZ plant, which I mean, come on, absolutely beautiful. But yeah, I actually think that concludes the video. Oh, I do have a little Peperomia down there and a struggling Peperomia hope there that couldn't use some more love so <laughs> we're not even going to show you an up close of that and here we have an Elvis cute as can be these two favorites of the collection <laughs> anyways that is all for today's video I hope you enjoyed this houseplant tour of my living room I know a lot has changed since the last video and I promise I will get more videos out in the future so Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and like this video and I will see you in the next one.